It's the season of the dinosaur. The world's top paleontologists dig into Canada's prehistoric past to unearth a living world buried in time. Bingo! You got dinosaurs. They'll battle heat and floods and the ticking clock as they track the footsteps of dinosaurs. And the most incredible creatures ever to walk the earth will live again on Dino Hunt. This week on Dino Hunt. A new generation of dino hunters is searching for a long lost quarry. We're looking for an individual animal called Ankylosaurus, the armored dinosaur. If the Ankylosaur team can solve a 100 year old mystery. Something large came out of here. They might find missing bones from a 77 million year old dinosaur. And in a secret BC location. Stop filming. Husband and wife team have uncovered the province's first complete dinosaur, lying just where it died. There's no roads into the site, so we have to take it out by air. The Hadrosaur team can get it out of the ground, but can they get it in the air? We'll be worried, we'll be concerned. The spring thaw comes late in Alberta. It's already deep into May when a team of young scientists from the University of Alberta lands at Dinosaur Provincial Park. Dino hunting season has begun. The students are led by renowned Canadian paleontologist, Dr. Philip J. Curry. When you get close to the Badlands coming over the crest and you suddenly see them spread out below you and you know there's all these bones there, the excitement is pretty intense. The world-famous fossil hunter has spent his career in the field in dig sites from Montana to Mongolia, linking feathered dinosaurs to modern-day birds and proving the T-Rex hunted in packs. Today, Curry's back digging on home turf. The reason I've come to Dinosaur Park so often over the years is simply because it's the best place in the world. And for good reason. 75 million years ago, this was lush forest, a steamy, fertile home to dozens of species of plant-eating dinosaurs, who in turn served as dinner for dozens of meat-eating dinosaurs. It looks pretty nice down here, though. It does. So this, this is upside down, right? For Curry, <laughs> this trip is a chance to mentor the next generation of dino hunters. I've always felt that if I can do something that's rewarding to them, then I've accomplished something. Their funding buys these grad students only three weeks of digging, so every day counts. PhD student Scott Persons is looking for meat eaters. Last year I found on one day a total of six tyrannosaur teeth. I'm looking to try to best that record this year. It's like when you're in grade school and you play that parachute game. Doctoral student Victoria Arbor has had a passion for paleontology since she was a teenager. This is my seventh year here. I've always liked dinosaurs ever since I was really young, so being able to collect in Dinosaur Provincial Park is like, you know, the holy grail of dinosaurs in Canada. A century ago, the first fossils were discovered lodged in the craggy moonscape of the Badlands. By 1910, adventurer and fossil hunter Barnum Brown grabbed headlines with a Triceratops skeleton and the world's first T-Rex. A century later, this new generation of explorers is determined to make discoveries of their own. This is just a fragment of bone, but there's the outer surface and the inner side, which is spongy. Based on the inside, it's probably from one of the plant-eating dinosaurs. But Victoria is looking for a very specific plant-eater. I like ankylosaurs, the armored dinosaurs, because they're the ugliest dinosaurs, and I feel like they don't necessarily always have their day in the sun. They might not be pretty, but they were tough. Ankylosaurs were the tanks of the dinosaur world. Their bodies were covered in bony plates for protection, like crocodiles or armadillos. Seventy-seven million years later, Victoria is on a mission to find one particular ankylosaur the missing pieces of a skeleton first found in the Badlands a hundred years ago. So we're looking for an individual animal called NHMUKR5161. 
and that was collected almost 100 years ago by someone named William Cutler. It has all of its armor still in place on its body, and there's even skin impressions, but it wasn't collected with a head or a tail club. Cutler was an amateur bone collector who had a habit of misplacing fossils and neglecting to document his dig sites. It would be really cool if we could relocate the head or the tail club, but I'd be happy to just find the hole where it had been collected from. Victoria's here to finish Cutler's work, but finding Cutler's cave won't be easy. Yeah, I got stuck my hand on a cactus. Ooh. I do not have the skills of a mountain goat. I wish that I had a mountain goat gene. <laughs> One thousand kilometers northwest, there's a different dino hunt underway. Tumbler Ridge, British Columbia. Population, 3,300. There isn't much here but creeks, coal, and uncharted forest. But 15 years ago, locals stumbled on signs of dinosaurs here. They called in the experts. Bump it. Bump it. And they never left. Richard McRae and his paleo partner wife, Lisa Buckley, made a career walking in the footsteps of dinosaurs. They spend every summer searching these mountains for dino tracks. If you're looking for treasure around every bend, you never know what you might find. So I had grown up always wanting to be a paleontologist. So to actually hear that there was dinosaur remains in British Columbia, that was pretty exciting. Footprints. Footprints. Big footprints. We have the back of the uh, foot here, and then side toe, middle toe, and other side. Just because the digits are pretty rounded at the tips, it could be a large ornithopod. Ornithopods were three-toed plant eaters, the cows of the dinosaur age. They left deep footprints, which sealed in the hardened mud and petrified over time. After 10 years in these hills, Rich and Lisa have found enough tracks and fossils to fill a warehouse. So they commandeered an abandoned building and filled it with dinosaur bones. Well, what we are walking through right now is a decommissioned elementary school. Their museum has been filling up with small dinosaur fossils found in the area. This is a rare find. It's one of the Tyrannosaur tracks, one of the very few worldwide. None of the full skeletons are from British Columbia. But if they're lucky, that's about to change. Hidden deep in the woods outside Tumbler Ridge, Rich and Lisa have uncovered the first complete dinosaur ever seen in British Columbia. It's taken them five years to get this far. And now it's ready to come out of the ground. It's a 74 million year old hadrosaur, a plant eater spanning nine meters from snout to tail and weighing in at 5.6 tons. On the floor here, we have a fairly large section of the uh, proximal tail, part of the tail. This specimen weighs about uh, 700 to 800 kilograms. Fossils aren't just buried bones. Once a dinosaur is covered in sand, minerals seep into its skeleton, making it as hard and as heavy as rock. Which is why the main hadrosaur, we're looking at something that weighs 2,000 to 3,000 kilograms, and there's no roads into the site, so we have to take it out by air. So we need a fairly substantial helicopter. What we're bringing back is British Columbia's first complete dinosaur. It's a very short flight that it needs to make, but that is going to be the most hair-raising thing that I've ever done out here. And I've hung off of ropes on vertical surfaces looking at tracks. We'll be worried. We'll be worried, we'll be concerned. There'll be some nail chewing. And if everybody knows what they're doing, it will land in one piece and not in many pieces. Will they be able to airlift the Hadrosaur team's 74 million year old prize safely? Will their hopes for a homegrown dinosaur exhibit shatter on impact? And in the Badlands, the Ankylosaur team might just have a picture of where to find Cutler's cave. We're on the right track. Tumbler Ridge, British Columbia, the Hadrosaur team is ready to dig out a dinosaur that's been hibernating all winter.
I'll always be worried about the jacket surviving lift. And in the badlands of Dinosaur Park, the Ankylosaur team prospects the rocks in search of fossils. But Victoria Arbor only has eyes for one dinosaur. I like ankylosaurs because they have this really cool tail that's been modified into a club or a, like a battle axe. A swing of its club tail could snap a bone or shatter a skull with deadly force. And if the legends are true, one might be waiting for her on the other side of this river. The mystery they're looking to uncover is only a century old. Barely a blip in the timeline for a paleontologist. In the early 20th century, American paleontologists flocked to this area to plunder dinosaur bones by the trainload. That didn't sit well with Canadians, so Ottawa hired its own dino hunter, Charles Hazalia Sternberg, who had decades of experience collecting fossils in the American West. Sternberg and his three sons came to Alberta to compete with the American fossil hunter Barnum Brown and trigger what is now remembered as the Canadian Dinosaur Rush. They would go to any lengths to stake a claim to the biggest find. There's no question that Brown and the Sternbergs had a good time when they went out because the material had been eroding for hundreds or thousands of years and much of it was on the surface. Thanks to the Sternbergs, many of Alberta's dinosaur fossils stayed in Canada and can still be seen in Toronto's Royal Ontario Museum. The Dino Rush attracted plenty of amateurs who hoped to find their fortune in the bones. One was William E. Cutler, who uncovered a complete ankylosaur skeleton in a nearby cave. But soon after the discovery, the prized tailbone and skull went mysteriously missing, along with the coordinates for the dig site. That specimen is on display in London, England right now. We'd love to find the rest of it. To help Victoria find it, Curry has called in some local talent named Darren Tankey, AKA the Dino Detective. Darren is like the go-to person for finding these old quarries and dinosaur parks. If anyone knows where the quarry is, it will be Darren. He looks for everything, every little bit of evidence you can possibly imagine. Sometimes it's just a mark in the rock. Sometimes it's a newspaper that's buried just outside the quarry. Tanky, from the local Royal Tyrrell Museum of Paleontology, has made a career finding abandoned dig sites and tracking down missing dinosaur bones. So I've been trying to find this site for quite a long time, but all we've had is a very poor photocopy of an old photograph. But recently, we were able to find a uh, original copy of the magazine, so there's a better picture to work from now. The photograph shows the fossil being lowered from the quarry, which reveals a clue about the surrounding landscape. So we're looking for basically a place where you've got a vertical cliff face with a sharp undercut forming a shadow. Exactly where the picture of Cutler's cave was taken is still murky. Cutler was an amateur collector who came to Canada in 1898. And he decided around 1912 to become a dinosaur collector. Cutler became the only person in human history to be attacked by an ankylosaur. While he was excavating, a thing fell on him, severely injuring his upper body. Other people collected the rest of the specimen for him, but they didn't really record where it came from. The Sternbergs created a map documenting all the dig sites of the day, and it might guide the team to Cutler's Cave. Okay, so we're camped here. We're going to cross the river, go to this flat here where Cutler had his camp. So it, we're just going to be going up that valley up there. But the Badlands have been pounded by rain and wind for over a century since that photo was taken. Even an expert like Tanky can't be certain Cutler's cave survived. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Meanwhile, a few kilometers away, Scott Persons may have just pulled a tooth. Oh! <laughs> out of the ground. All right. So that is a Tyrannosaur tooth. This tooth belongs right in the front of the Tyrannosaur's mouth, so it would use it to stab in and then sort of cookie cutter out a great big chunk of flesh. 
There's a reason the Tyrannosaurus held the top spot on the food chain. With their strength, speed, and heightened senses, these fierce bipeds were pure predator. Scott has found his first Tyrannosaur fossil of the season, so he's off to a good start. Meanwhile, in Tumbler Ridge, British Columbia, husband and wife paleo team Rich McRae and Lisa Buckley have discovered an articulated hadrosaur. They're worried their dig site will be destroyed before they can get their specimen out. We do feel paranoid, but it's been justified with uh, vandalisms at other sites. So to keep British Columbia's first complete dinosaur skeleton safe, they're keeping its location secret. The couple is taking no chances. Rich and his assistant, Dustin, will drive equipment down to the dig site. Lisa will lead the film crew to the dig site by way of a secret trail. All right, we're off, so I'll get you guys to stop filming. While the Hadrosaur team fades to black, the Ankylosaur team goes face to face with a hundred-year-old dino hunter. Cutler was sitting right there. In Alberta's Dinosaur Provincial Park, the Ankylosaur team is searching for a hundred-year-old dig site that could be hiding 77 million-year-old bones. We're looking for an individual animal called NHMUKR5161. And in an undisclosed BC location, a 74 million-year-old hadrosaur skeleton waits to be airlifted to safety. The hadrosaur team who discovered it is doing their best to protect the site from vandals. So our camera crew has been asked to travel blind and not to film the route to the dig site. All right, well, we're in the uh, middle of nowhere now, and I bet that you guys have no idea where you are right now, so we can start filming. Oh, oh! Shouting seems like an odd way to keep a place under wraps, but this security measure isn't to keep fossils safe, it's to keep people safe. We have to be careful, bears are using this trail. The call I just made right there is our uh, bear alarm system to let the bears know that we're coming. Right down here, we have bear scat. Scat is poo. Scat is definitely poo. Feces, dookie. Oh! Rich lands at the site for the first time in six months. This is the site. And uh, we're very excited to get back at it, uh, hoping to get the uh, main dinosaur out this year. This is it right here, this hump. The massive skeleton has been buried to keep it hidden from vandals. Ah, a lot of Rich and the team need to dig it out to get it ready for the airlift. But they're no strangers to moving dirt. Over the past five years, we've removed probably about 300 plus cubic meters of rock by hand. It's starting to be free. With the dirt cleared, it's time to see how their dinosaur slept through the winter. Weathered very well, so I'm not worried about the jacket surviving the lift. Well, yeah, I'll always be worried about the jacket surviving lift, but it is as good as we left it last summer. Under the plaster jacket is a complete fossilized dinosaur, lying in the same position as when it took its last breath. And you see the writing here shows where we have identified different parts of the bones in the animal. So there's chevrons, these are the, those spines that are on the underside of the tail. This area here, the neural spines, these were the first set of articulated vertebrae that we found. The dinosaur's spine is arched backwards, as though it died violently and in great pain. The original thought back in the uh, early days of interpreting fossils was those were the death throes of the animal. But uh, as more work has been done, we have found out that uh, as an animal's body decays and falls apart, the tendons and the ligaments, they dry out. It's going to pull the entire body into this arched neck, arched tail pose. After lying underground for 74 million years, their hadrosaur is ready for its new home. But the question remains, will their dinosaur fly? In the Alberta Badlands, the Ankylosaur team has learned that Cutler's Cave, the dig site that went missing a century ago, might be right across the river from their camp. 
The search party is led by dino detective Darren Tankey, and he may be onto something. So now we're entering Cutler's camp from 1914, and his tent was just situated over that area right there. Very cool. Well, if you just stand right here, you can see that these hills mm -hmm. here oh, yeah. are those hills there. Cool. And this hill here with the rocks on top and spilling down the slope that is that one there. right there. Yeah. That's great. So very cool. Cutler was sitting right there almost 100 years ago. Oh, great. Now that they found the camp, Tanky and the Ankylosaur team split up, searching for clues that might lead them to Cutler's cave. And you can even see here, there's some wire oh, cool. where his tent was. It's oh, just yeah. an extra way of making sure the crate didn't open That's during intense. shipment on the railroad. Almost 100 years old. Well, I think we're off to a good start today. We've actually matched the 1914 Cutler camp photograph with the actual site. He didn't have a truck or a car, so he had to camp near Quarry. We're on the right track. Deeper in the Badlands, Scott Persons is tracking tyrannosaurs, but stumbles on something a little less terrifying. So this is the uh, end of a limb bone from Turtle. These particular turtles like to hang out in water. These are not um, dry land tortoises. So again, that tells us that we're dealing with a wet, warm environment. 75 million years ago, Alberta was beachfront property on the shores of a warm inland sea that cut deep into North America. It was hot and swampy and dense with vegetation for the herbivores to eat, and dense with herbivores for the carnivores to eat. So this is a radius from a hadrosaur or a duck-billed dinosaur, and we can be certain of that from its overall shape. This is a pretty big forearm. You can see it's much, much uh, larger than mine. Uh, so this is an animal probably exceeding 30 feet from the tip of its ducky snout to the end of its long tail. Scott's fossil is from a hadrosaur, a duck-billed dinosaur. This was the biggest plant eater in Alberta. Well, what makes it really, really cool, if you get down low, you can see over here, there are some tiny scratch marks on the surface of the bone. And finally, this one really, really deep gouge. Those are tooth marks. Only animal in the dinosaur park ecosystem that can leave a deep gouge like that on a bone is a kind of tyrannosaur. A tyrannosaur called Gorgosaurus, who hunted in this area 75 million years ago. At nine meters long, it could sprint up to 40 kilometers per hour. The very first one was found in 1913 by Canada's first paleontologists, the Sternbergs, right here in Dinosaur Provincial Park. Scott has found a bone worth taking back to the camp, but to get it out of the ground, he's got to use a delicate touch or he'll shatter his prize. Across the river, Darren Tankey and the Ankylosaur team are zeroing in on the mystery quarry. We are now roughly here. A map of the area was made by the Sternbergs over 60 years ago. It's led Tanky to what he thinks is Cutler's Cave, which might contain the missing ankylosaur skull and tail. We're having some conflicting GPS issues. <laughs> the arrows are flipping around back and forth. The problem is, the 100-year-old map and the crew's GPS can't agree on directions. We cannot be 100% sure that we've found the site. There are no photographs to tell us that this is the site. This is exactly where we want to be. If Tanky's map is right, It'll lead the Ankylosaur team to a quarry that hasn't been seen for a hundred years. And in BC, the Hadrosaur team hopes they can get their heavyweight dino off the ground without broken bones. I've never lifted a dinosaur, so that's another one for the books. In a secret British Columbia dig site, the Hadrosaur team is waiting for a lift. They're hoping the helicopter company will be able to get their complete skeleton out of the ground and into the air. We need a fairly substantial helicopter. And in the Alberta Badlands, Victoria Arbor and the Ankylosaur team are willing to risk hostile terrain if it leads them to a lost site that was last seen a century ago. If they find the legendary Cutler's Cave, they could recover the missing skull and tailbone of a rare Ankylosaur. It went missing before it was shipped out to London about a century ago. William Cutler did keep some field notes and so hopefully we'll be able to find the quarry. All they have to go on is a faded photograph, 
showing what might be the skeleton being lifted out of the quarry. Uh, you can see they're inclined like this. Yeah. <sighs> Something large came out of here. Hmm. Something quite large. But uh, hmm. what? Hmm. We found bits of burlap, bits of plaster, bits of wood. So we know something was taken out of here. The rock looks generally like the rock around the, the specimen, which is on display in London. I just can't see anyone going through all of the effort to dig something out of that horrendous spot and it not be something incredibly significant. But do you think, is this big enough for... Well, I've got Cutler's article where he talks about how big the block was. Yeah. In feet. See, I got 10 feet. So that's where I thought maybe the tail was and in there. that's this one, right? I don't, there's nothing that looks like yeah. vertebrae and cross section. There's, no, there's no bone there's at all. There's nothing. No. No. I feel like it, it needs to be a somewhat bigger quarry because the specimen is quite huge. It's disappointing, but Darren's hunch was wrong. The quarry is too small to have been Cutler's cave. I know it's a real it's a real conundrum for me. I'm really troubled by by what's going on here right now. It's too bad because Darren was pretty confident about this one. So. So that's kind of a a bit of a nail in the coffin. I think this might be an example of a quarry that's just completely and utterly lost for all time. It's it's just eroded away and it's gone. Until we find the skull or some other evidence that this is definitely the quarry, we're going to keep looking because I think that the mystery has not been solved yet. Across the Red Deer River, Scott Persons is having a better afternoon. The hadrosaur bone with the tyrannosaur bite marks is almost ready to dig up. So the function of the paper towels is just to protect the bone. The plaster protects the fragile fossils, but even after they're coated, there's always a chance they'll break apart. This is always the most dangerous part of pulling a fossil out. And if all goes well, the jacket will hold. It just tends to be unpredictable. So cross your fingers. OK. Beautiful. All right. All right. Time to pack up and go have a steak dinner. In Tumbler Ridge, British Columbia, Hadrosaur team Rich McRae and Lisa Buckley are waiting for an expert opinion. Can a 4,000-kilo hadrosaur skeleton be airlifted to safety? Any more strength we can put in it won't hurt. Right now, there's no guarantee. As the lift team ponders their payload, they survey the area for the oncoming chopper. When the helicopter comes in, it's the same as a hurricane, 100-mile-an-hour winds. Some of those winds could push those trees over fairly easy. You might not see them. They'll come down real fast. You break your neck. I'm more or less doing this for myself, not the dinosaur. Yeah. He's already dead. <laughs> After all this waiting, there's still plenty to worry about. This is the first complete dinosaur skeleton ever found in British Columbia. And even if it clears the tree line, it could still break apart mid-flight under the pressure of its own weight. Let's think of if we got one here, another one here, right? It will be a very high risk time where it's not on the ground and not stable. So if something were to happen to it, you can't help but feel attached to it. Then I'll put a net over top of this just so it doesn't spin. It, the net will break the wind. The dinosaur will be airborne for one harrowing kilometer, then lowered gently onto a flatbed truck. The helicopter can handle a payload of 5,000 kilograms. McRae figures the fossil weighs about 4,400 a little more than a fully grown elephant. But that's just an educated guess. 
Well, I've got lots of experience, you know. I've never lifted a dinosaur. So that's another one for the books, right? The team rigs a cradle to lift the hadrosaur out of the gully and into the limelight as the star attraction at their Tumblr Ridge Museum. There is a whole lot riding on this going right. It's a new day in Dinosaur Provincial Park. Victoria may not have found Cutler's Cave or her pet ankylosaur, but if you just keep digging, the Badlands might offer up a consolation prize. When we're in the field, it's very seldom that we're going to find exactly what we're working on or exactly what we're hoping to find. An hour later, persistence pays off. What you got, Victoria? Oh, it looks like we've got some sort of long bone going into the ground here. Yeah. We're just going to keep picking along and see what we can get. This rock is really soft around it, so it's not too hard to excavate around. All right. It's nice to find a nice, complete bone. I'm always looking for ankylosaurs, but really, I'm happy just to find anything that's cool. So I was really happy about that. The dark clouds gathering over the Badlands aren't going to dampen Victoria's spirits. She's onto something big. No, it's huge. That's awesome. Yeah, it looks pretty good, though. It looks great. I'm pretty happy. We think it's probably the shin bone or tibia of a meat-eating dinosaur called Gorgosaurus, who's like a smaller relative of Tyrannosaurus rex, which everybody knows and loves. It's the same kind of dinosaur that left the tooth Scott found and that chewed into the hadrosaur bone. 74 million years ago, Gorgosaurus prowled these swamps in search of slower-moving plant eaters. And hadrosaur was definitely on the menu. While unlikely, is it possible that they hold in their hands traces of this actual Gorgosaur? And this hadrosaur, predator and prey? Victoria's made a great find, but now she's in a race with Mother Nature. Basically, we have about half an hour. All of these rills you see fill up with water, and we have big waterfalls, and all of these channels become completely full of water, and then it becomes impossible to move. It's a little bit frustrating. Luckily, though, we had uh, Victoria's great find. It would have been nice to have gotten that bone trenched out a little bit more, uh, maybe put up a little bit more rain safety on it. Victoria's new fossil has been exposed to the elements for the first time in millions of years. Whether it will be there tomorrow is anyone's guess. In BC, a copter is coming to pick up a dinosaur. But if the hadrosaur team guessed its weight wrong, it's not going to make it home. There's been times where these things have been cut loose 200 feet above the ground. Nothing survived. In Tumbler Ridge, BC, a chopper is on the way. Same as a hurricane, 100 mile an hour wind. If they can pull it off, the first full dinosaur skeleton ever found here will be heading to its new home. And in Alberta, Dinosaur Park is underwater. Victoria Arbor found a prize fossil, but right now the dig is called on account of rain. And if it continues, days worth of hard work could simply drift away. Well, today is a, a rain day, whether you like it or not. Because the Badlands become so slippery, it's impossible to go out there. Right now, we just have to sit and wait. But Victoria has found a fun way to pass the time, Dino Hunter style. Well, I brought my sketchbook along, and the game is that you have to draw a dinosaur or whatever. <laughs> and I like to see what everybody can draw in camp. OK. <laughs> As the rain continues to fall, at least the crew can stay warm and well fed. It's frustrating because I think all of us want to get out there and go prospecting, but we just can't when it's this wet and muddy. For now, the team has no choice but to hunker down and hope that the weather clears.
In Tumbler Ridge, it's D-Day, Dinosaur Day. A helicopter is on its way to airlift British Columbia's first articulated dinosaur skeleton. I always go ahead and assess all the landing spots. The Hadrosaur team, Buckley and McRae, have been waiting five years for this day, and they are worried sick, literally. I've been better. <laughs> Little bug, just a flesh wound. Rich has been better. <laughs> Feeling ill, sore throat, dehydrated, no sleep, hadn't eaten. It was just a recipe for disaster. <laughs> Andy and this is Kirk. Maybe we're pilots, so it'll be. Either. I suppose the risks are we could have an engine failure and we might have to, to drop the load. Yeah, I don't even exactly. really want to talk about it because it's not going to yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, obviously it's uh, it's not like a boulder. I assume it's a little more delicate than a. A lot more delicate, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. With the chopper ready, Lisa and Rich rush back to the dig site. Here it coming. Pretty good. Yeah, Moment of good. truth. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see this guy airborne. Yeah, 75, 74 million years it hasn't budged, so it's gonna have quite a shift today. The big question now is, did they get the weight right? If the fossil's heavier than 5,000 kilograms, the airlift could end in disaster. There's been times where these things have been cut loose 200 feet above the ground and hit with such force that they re-liquefy the plaster and no nothing survives. Now it's time to see if British Columbia's first full dinosaur will make it to its destination in one piece. They're not out of the woods yet. In the Alberta Badlands, the ankylosaur team waits for the rain to clear so Victoria Arbor can retrieve her prized Gorgosaurus bone. It's frustrating because I think all of us want to get out there, but we just can't when it's this wet and muddy. And in Tumbler Ridge, the Hadrosaur team watches anxiously as a chopper attempts to lift BC's first complete dinosaur skeleton out of the ground and into the air. If it makes it, it'll become their museum's first homegrown exhibit. Guessing its weight is a dangerous game when you're flying dinos. Rich calculated that it's about 4,400 kilograms, close to this chopper's maximum. If he's wrong, the pilot will have to dump the fossil. After several nerve-wracking minutes, they finally hear from the chopper pilot. We just confirmed how much the jacket actually weighed, and the total came out to... 44. 4,400. Nice. Nice. Well calculated. Yes, yes. Bump it. Bump it. It's a close call. The fossil weighs just 600 kilos under the limit. Can you let us know when it touches down on the trailer, please? It's on the deck, nice and smooth. It landed? It's down. Yes, I'll sleep very well tonight. I was very elated to see this thing successfully on the trailer, perfectly placed. It was fantastic, it was like better than 10 Christmases.
In Alberta, the rain stopped falling, and it's safe for the ankylosaur team to return to the Badlands. This is Victoria's last day, and she's hoping her fossil survived the rain. The bone is intact, still safely lodged in the sandstone. The other day, I put a little bit of a protective bandage on this bone. You have to bail out the water, go down a little bit further, and then jacket it. Victoria will go home with the bone from Gorgosaurus, the park's most terrifying predator. The same type of dinosaur that gnawed on the bone of the hadrosaur that Scott found. It's an incredible link to a world that vanished millions of years ago. Those are the consolation prizes, and it means by being open to these things, we always get a prize. I think we'll actually put the branch into this one. With the bone ready for transport, it's time for Victoria to say goodbye to the Badlands. She may not have found Cutler's Cave or her prized ankylosaur, but every dig has its own rewards. Really, paleontology is something where you um, you have to work long and hard, and if you find anything at all, you're doing pretty good. Well, I'm extremely happy that I had a chance to go out to look at some of the potential sites, and even though we didn't find it, I'm very happy with what we did find out. So I would say that this field work has been a success for me. <laughs> In Tumbler Ridge, the hadrosaur finally arrives at its new home. So we do want to take the entire skeleton, clean them up, make them presentable, and turn them into the uh, central main exhibit for our gallery. It'll take time to get it ready for display, but for Rich and Lisa, it's a labor of love. This is a frontier, one of the few remaining in North America. There's a chance for you to make a difference to go into an area that nobody's been in before and to find things nobody's seen before. Rich McRae and Lisa Buckley have proven dinosaur skeletons can be found in BC. They'll continue to scour the rock face and search the creeks on the hunt for their next big find.